Hi everyone, Post the Knee Wave Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. And it's time for a review of the new Airplane Death From Above 1979 record, The Physical World. These guys are a Toronto rock duo featuring Jesse Keeler and Sebastian Granger. And 10 years or so ago, they dropped an EP and a full-length album of originals, and then they pretty much like dropped off the face of the planet. Outside of some live shows and touring and, and some not nearly as successful solo and side projects. And as the hope that these guys would reunite and come out with new music sort of faded away, it seemed like people's interest and appreciation of their only full-length album grew. DFA 1979's only full-length album, Your Woman, I'm a Machine, had so much going for it. Even though instrumentally it was pretty stripped back, mostly just vocals, drums, and bass guitar, with the occasional keyboard making its way into sweeten a particular song up. But oddly enough, nothing really felt missing from the band's formula. As far as the drumming was concerned, Granger's performances had a lot of intensity, a lot of punk ferocity, but he also seemed to have a really deep appreciation for dance music beats and just body moving grooves as well. I also really enjoyed his vocal delivery on these tracks. He had a good vocal range, he sounded impassioned as he was singing, he had a lot of swagger and charisma, and Keeler's thick, distorted bass riffs had both the heaviness and the buzz that any modern rock record should. And much of his playing on this album seemed to pull a lot from not only metal music and punk music, but funk and dance music too. There was great production on this LP, there were great performances, but in my opinion it's really hooks and songwriting where these guys shine the most. Because to me, tracks like Romantic Rights and Black History Month and Little Girl, as well as the track Going Steady, are not only great from a performance standpoint, but they're really catchy songs too. Now, a few years ago came the announcement that Death From Above 1979 were back, effectively. They started playing some live shows, but it didn't feel real until we got the announcement that new music was going to be coming down the pipe too. The first single, effectively, to come off of this LP, and um... I mean, not really the fire starter of a song you hope for. To me, the track had kind of a mundane start to it, didn't really kick things off in an exciting way, in the way that I would hope a Death From Above song would. There's kind of a cheap throwaway eye roll chorus on the track. If it weren't for the piano flourishes on the hook here, I would say this song is just pretty run of the mill for DFA, but maybe just a little bit more pop appeal. And I don't know, I couldn't help but pick up maybe just a little bit of, of, of self-awareness, of self-critique on the release of this song in the title, given that it's titled Trainwreck. 1979. Still though, on the whole, I don't really think this is a bad comeback album, and I felt relatively positive going into it given the last song to come out before the release of this LP, Government Trash, was maybe one of the most hard-hitting songs I've ever heard the band release, period. And even though Trainwreck 1979 doesn't really start that excitingly, this album itself certainly does with the track Cheap Talk. The, the bass and the drum groove on this track, it is just classic. It's classic death from above, if you will allow me to use such a word with them. Those hi-hats, that bass drum and kick pattern, just the heaviness of that bass guitar. Not a bad chorus either. The song rules, and uh, th this track and really this album altogether, it, it seems like it's mostly focused on just trying to rekindle that same magic that was there 10 years ago when their debut LP came out. And it definitely happens for the most part, and there are some key, standout, really enjoyable tracks in the track listing here, like Crystal Ball and Right on Frankenstein tracks that feature DFA 1979's trademark slick nicely performed vocals and the rock and the dance beats being fused together and the heavy groove and bass riffs. However, there are some underwhelming cuts in the track listing here as well, such as Always On, which to me would be a pretty inconspicuous track for DFA 1979, if not for the pretty climactic ending. And then there's the song Virgins, which to me sounds like a kind of 
pathetic piece of blues rock revivalism, a la DFA 1979's usual production and aesthetic. It's like this track is for people who think the Black Keys invented blues. And then there's the song Nothing Left, which to me marks a clear lack of innovation in that Keeler is almost completely recycling a bass riff that the band used on their previous LP. There are a few surprises though in the track listing here. There's the song White Is Red, which is the closest DFA 1979 has ever come to a slow jam. It's uh, got a load of heartbroken lyrics, some young love, some abandonment issues here. I'm not saying the lyrics are gold or anything, but it's certainly a clear storyline applied to a sad sounding song, which was kind of a nice change of pace in the track listing here. And then there's the physical world, the title track, which ends this entire LP off and is maybe the most epic song on the entire record. Keeler playing a lot of melodies with his bass that are kind of romantic in nature, very archaic. I think it's a bold finish to the record and definitely leaves a glimmer of hope for future DFA 1979 releases to have maybe a bit more refreshing material, a few more surprises within. In my opinion, this is not a bad record. There are some tracks I prefer more than others, a track or two that I really don't vibe with at all, but many I do enjoy. Of course, to longtime fans, this album, when you give it a listen, it's not going to feel iconic. There's no possible way that it could in your mind because the band has such a limited amount of pre-existing material and you've had such a long span of time to listen and ingest that material. It would be really difficult to come along and expect this record to knock the old material out of the park, especially considering that DFA is making music that is roughly in the same vein as their old stuff. Now, even though I'm not head over heels in love with this record, I think it's great that the band has come forward and proven that they can come together with another coherent album, do this comeback, and have it not be a total flop. And hopefully on their next release, they're able to come out with music that gains hype on the merits of its writing and production and performance versus the hype of the band's return. I'm feeling a strong six to a light seven on this thing. Tran, Zishin, if you've given this record a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Death From Above 1979, The Physical World, Forever.